Hi, my name's Dale and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks, your YouTube channel dedicated to everything metal. This is part three of the Ultimate Metrology Center, Making the Panels. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Metal Supermarkets, and there are more than 70 stores. When they contacted me and said they wanted to sponsor this channel, I was so excited because I know with their support, I'm going to be able to do bigger and better projects for you guys. So check them out on the web and find the closest location to you. It's time to design the artwork for the panels. We can be as simple as we want with these panels. We can just go with flat plates and walk away, but that's not fun to me. What I want to do is put a pattern in it. And there's all sorts of ways we can put a pattern in it. We can paint it on. We could cut it out with a plasma cutter. Or this. We have options, but the one we're going to use on this is a bead roller. And bead rollers are usually used more for the sheet metal guys that are trying to develop some sort of pattern or make a new floorboard, but we're going to take it to the level of art. I've got a steel panel in front of me. This is 22 gauge. We could go thicker if we wanted to, but the thicker you go, the harder it is to get your pattern worked into it. One of my favorite architectural designs is Art Deco. Art Deco to me just rocks it. There's something about the lines, the shape, the use of negative space. To me, it is just amazing how you can do asymmetrical design and still be balanced. So I did a quick sketch right here. This is going to be basically the two side panels. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the larger panel in the back. Um, I know I'm going to do something. It'll be a modification of this. We might shrink this down. We might double its size. Um, we might make two of them. Not exactly sure. Now, I am not an Art Deco historian. And for you guys that are, if I make any mistakes, I apologize up front. So what we want to do is we want to center up this panel and I'm just going to start sketching and you guys can just come along and see what I do. When we're working this, we're always going to use this edge as our hero edge. Everything is perfect from here. I'm going to start my sketch out with pencil first and then I'll go over it with a Sharpie. There we go. I think the panel worked out really well. This is the first one I'm going to make. There might be several of this because I don't know how the bead roller is going to react. I don't know how deep we're going to be able to make the embossed pattern. I don't know how much the panel is going to twist and warp. This is really kind of an education we're all going to get to go through at the same time. Let's go over to the bead roller and see what happens. We're here at the bead roller. This is a bead roller that I made back when I lived in Idaho, and I made it for parts from a stair lift. A lot of people, when they work with sheet metal, work with gloves, uh, because these edges always have some sort of burr on them and will cut you. I've just gotten kind of accustomed to it. Before I work on my main panel, I'm going to do some test work here. There's some challenges that I want to work out. The very top, we have this diamond. Connected to it is a couple radiuses, and then a couple steps. And 
make this one a little larger. What I want to do first is I want to discover how I'm going to do those. We're going to work with the panel. I want the object to come out so everything that bumps out on top of everything has to be done first. To see where I need these rollers, we're going to go down, I think, two turns. One, two, my table set a little little high maybe. Back up. Next one. Now the challenge here is getting things lined up corner to corner. One, two. materials there. I'm trying to anticipate what my problems are going to be. And right now I can see one of my problems is the table's too high. So we're going to lower it. I also think going down two turns is too much. We're going to go down a turn and a half and see what happens. slid on me. Give me a completely different angle from what I wanted. So let's try this one on this side. So my high side needs to always be on the inside for this to work. What I might end up doing is flopping the dies around for different applications. Matter if I'm going left or right, but we're going to just kind of continue this, see how it goes. So a corner like this looks like I can go back over it. I may have to go in and do some hand work. I'm not exactly sure how detailed I want to make this because I could drive myself crazy. I just need a cool design. That is simple to opt to make. I don't know if I'm going to succeed with this, but we'll just keep working on it and find out. One of the things I had to do was change the rollers around because the rollers were set up in such a way that I was colliding with this, so I didn't have enough length. So it's just one of those things you just have to w w learn about and just change things around as you need to. So I'm going to start uh, cutting these, or I should say cutting these. Uh, I'm going to start molding these lines. We're going to do all the verticals first, go around. We're going to do the top lines. And then we'll go back and do the horizontals. The diamond, I still haven't decided when I'm going to do that. I think I want to get a better feel for the machine, so I'm going to do these other lines first.
keep rolling. It's kind of like cats. No matter what side of the door they're on, they're always on the wrong side. Well, no matter what, where you set your dies, well, they always seem to be on the wrong side. So I've reversed them again. Now I'm going to shape these next pieces. One of the things I'm learning to do is stop before I get into this part here. No matter what I'm going to do, I'm never going to get a sharp edge or a sharp corner with a round die. So there's no reason to even try. The corners are turning out pretty well. I'm not complaining. But you can see how if I just stop right before it, it still creates the illusion that it connected. I think this panel looks fantastic. Couldn't be happier. Now I'm going to probably do a little bit of handwork into these corners just to clean them up and that's where I'm going to set it out on a table with a piece of steel underneath it that's slightly shaped and just tap on it a little bit and basically do some body work. I'm also going to work out some sort of pattern possibly in these corners, I'm not sure if I do. And I also have to design the back panel which I still haven't decided how that's going to uh, work out. Is it going to be this pattern larger? Is there going to be two of these? Is it going to be something completely different? This is the end of part three. Part four is making the drawers. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. Also, give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.